Look, it's no secret that I'm not a fan of Joe Biden. If it were just up to me, I would have picked the president of the United States to be like Jacinda Ardern or someone. But Rebecca, you say, Jacinda Ardern already is the prime minister of New Zealand. Yes, she is. And she's doing a great job. Let's poach her. That's what successful companies do. You see someone doing a good job at a rival company, you poach their asses, pay them more money. Come on over here, Jacinda. We haven't put a hole in our ozone layer yet. We've got that going for us. We have very few active volcanoes near major population centers. Huh? We've got in and out. So yeah, I want things like universal health care and basic income and higher education and for all drugs to be legal and maybe free. So Biden is way too conservative for me. And I'm always happy to bash him. So when I saw this news that his Department of Justice was going to vigorously defend religious institutions right to discriminate against LGBTQ students, I was ready to go. But when I started reading more into it, things got complicated which they always seem to do when I read into things. I really, I got to stop doing that. So what, am I about to defend Joe Biden against LGBTQ activists during Pride Month? No. Well, kind of. Not really. I guess I'm actually going to just criticize the entire American system of justice and our troubled attempts to keep a separation between church and state. Here's what's going on. Title IX is a federal law passed by Congress in 1972, essentially meant to protect women and girls from discrimination in education. Uh, later, the course determined that it could also be applied to protect LGBTQ people. However, there is a religious exemption, and over the years, various administrations have uh, introduced more and more religious loopholes. Like first religious controlled schools were allowed to discriminate as they see fit. By the time it got to Trump, he had opened up loopholes further to allow pretty much any institution to discriminate against anyone. And they don't even have to justify their actions unless they're sued, at which point they can just say, yeah, we just strongly believe that lesbians shouldn't exist or whatever. And despite this discrimination, these schools can continue to benefit from federal funding. Now, a collection of LGBTQ students have banded together to launch a class action lawsuit against the Department of Education for allowing their religious universities to discriminate against them in a variety of ways, uh, like threatening them with fines and expulsion, uh, humiliating them, and making them go through conversion therapy to magically turn them heterosexual. Let me just take a moment to head off one minor question that many of you may be thinking right now. Why would queer students attend anti-queer universities? Well, I don't know about you, but I had to pick what universities I wanted to go to when I was 16 years old. And at that point, I hadn't even kissed someone, let alone internalized the idea that I might want to kiss girls. Um, and the lead plaintiff of Hunter v. Department of Education is Elizabeth Hunter, a lesbian who was placed with a foster family as a girl uh, that was in a religious cult that doesn't even think women should be able to go to college. So to get out of there, she had to apply to the fundamentalist Bob Jones University. It was pretty much her only choice. The fact of the matter is that marginalized people often end up at, the, at these institutions that are going to abuse them. Progressives might hope that the Biden administration would respond to this lawsuit by saying, you know what? They're right. They win. Like, if I uh, sued a company and they know that I'm in the right and they don't want to waste the money fighting it, they could just tell me, yep, you're right, here's a million dollars or whatever. Like, that's how the law works, right? Well, in this case, it is not how the law works. If the Department of Justice decides that they can't or won't defend the Title IX exemptions, that would allow other groups to step in and do it for them. In this case, the Council for Christian Colleges and Universities, CCCU, is already begging judges to get them off the bench and into the game, where they will argue that not only are the exemptions legal, but that those exemptions don't go far enough in allowing Christian schools to completely shit on women and queer people. This puts the Biden administration in a tough spot. If they say the students are right, let them win, they risk putting in the CCCU and losing more protections for LGBTQ people in the end if the courts are sympathetic. 
If they say, okay, we're going to defend the law, which is what they did, they get a bunch of very understandably upset progressives wondering why they're being double-crossed by an administration that promised to protect them. I don't fault activists for pushing back, and it's impressive that they forced the administration to almost immediately amend their court filing, changing the word vigorously uh, to adequately. We're going to adequately defend this case, uh, which is a much, much better, clearer word. And uh, they also put in a note pointing out that the Department of Education will be reviewing the overall way that they implement these exemptions. Even though it doesn't necessarily change much about how this case is going to go, I do think that those activists have done an, ama- an amazing job sending a very big, very clear message that these exemptions are wrong and that they should be changed. Uh, but how do we get them changed? Probably not through this court case. Congress established the exemption so Congress can ditch it. It's absolutely bonkers when you think about the fact that this even was put into law in the first place. Like, let's go to all this trouble to make sure that schools don't discriminate against women. But if you really, really want to discriminate against women, you can. So long as you really believe it. Because religion. That's magical thinking right there. It's 2021. It is well past the time that we stop coddling religion at the expense of marginalized people. Telling religious institutions that they can't be bigots and still get federal funding, that's not discriminating against religion. Telling religious institutions that they're the only ones who can be bigots and still get federal funding, that is privileging religion. Secular organizations are at a disadvantage when they need to take care to protect marginalized people, but religious organizations don't need to. That's a violation of separation of church and state. And removing that religious exemption loophole wouldn't even prevent these institutions from continuing to discriminate against students if they really want to. It would just mean that they're no longer eligible for our tax dollars. Your and my queer-ass, gay-as-fuck tax dollars can no longer go to these bigots. I'll be honest, I wanted to do a purely, like, happy, pride-oriented video, but honestly, I think this is more appropriate because there's good news in that activists have done a good thing and the administration is probably going to fight for LGBTQ people, um, but there's still a lot of work to do. And to me, that's what pride is is about, in part, is uh, remembering that as far as we've come, there's still further to go. This may be cold comfort, but for at least a little while, the Democrats have control of both houses of Congress and the presidency. So I hope the activists continue to agitate against this bullshit exemption and convince our representatives to step up and stop privileging religious institutions that want to abuse marginalized students. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I don't normally do these little stingers at the end, but maybe it'll help. I don't know. Please subscribe if you enjoy my videos and, you know, hit the little notification bell. Um, it, It helps. It helps other people see my videos. And if you would like to become a patron, you can uh, go over to patreon.com slash Rebecca. Patrons get uh, extra videos and they also get to see these videos early. And uh, I like them more than people who aren't patrons. Sorry, that's just a fact.